let me have the honor to introduce the first speaker to our participants it is a matter of great honor to have with us professor prodeep kukon of the department of chemistry guwahati university an alumnus of guwahati university professor kukon completed his doctoral research from the csir national chemical laboratory pune and thereafter pursued post doctoral research from the university of tubingen germany his prestigious career is studded with honors and awards professor fukun has figured in the list of top 2% scientists worldwide based on an independent study conducted by stanford university us a fellow of the royal society of chemistry london in 2017 Professor Fukon was also the recipient of the prestigious Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship during his postdoctoral studies in Germany in the year 2002-2003 and thereafter in 2007, 2009 and 2010 respectively. He is the only fellow from Northeast India to receive the Ramanna Fellowship in 2007. In the year 2013, he was awarded the Bronze Medal by Chemical Research Society of India. In the same year, Professor Fukon was awarded the Best Chemistry Teacher Award for promotion of chemistry as a subject by Tata Chemical Association of Chemistry Teachers India, Confederation of Indian Industries and Royal Society of Chemistry UK. Additionally, he was also the recipient of JN Borua Memorial Science Award conferred by Assam Science Society in the year 2008. Vien Das Memorial Science Award in the year 2009, Shyamasri Gupta Memorial Young Scientist Award in the year 2011, Professor H C Bhuya Award in 2013, and many more. Professor Fukon's citation statistics in Google Scholar reveals about 3,076 citations with an H index of 27 and an I index of 77. Professor Fukun has supervised 28 PhD theses, and eight scholars are currently working under him. He has three patents and over hundreds of publications in international journals. So I take this opportunity to once again welcome Professor Prodeep Fukun to this webinar, and I request him to deliver his presentation on this online platform. Please, sir. Thank you, uh, Dr. Uh, Sadashri Sodhari for kind introduction. And first of all, I like to thank uh, Professor Arunima Sharma and Professor Lila Kanto Bhattacharya, Principal Morigaon College, for giving me an opportunity to interact all August audience today. And uh, respected uh, K. G. Bhattacharya sir, and respected uh, Professor Jugan Kolita, President of the G. B. of Morigaon College. and all the participants so today is the 67th uh, foundation day so i would like to congratulate the uh, entire team of morigaon college led by dr lila bothakur for successful 66 years of uh, thank you sir existence thank you sir thank you very much so i hope uh, it will continue your, your glorious uh, presence in the and the region and as well as enter asa so with this uh, i like to speak on my work um, on my topic so i like to uh, speak on this intellectual property right as uh, i was uh, requested i hope you are uh, seeing my slides slides are visible yes yes sir. Yes, okay. yes yes visible sir okay. so sometimes uh, Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah. Now it is presentation mode. So if the slides are not moving, please uh, inform me. Here it moves. Sometimes it does not move in the, for audience. So this is my plan of talk, uh, introduction, and what is IPR and type of IPR, how to obtain IPR, organizations for IPR support, zero IPR selectivities. Maybe I'll skip this part and concluding remark. So and this also is uh, not much. So, what is uh, intellectual property right? By this time, definitely, uh, most of our colleagues and uh, participants of this webinar uh, must be knowing definitely about intellectual property. However, still, uh, I will give a glimpse on this text. Uh, so, intellectual property 
So refers to anything new created by our mind, example inventions, literary and artistic works, designs and symbols, names and images used in commerce. You can see I put uh, four different uh, items here. So all items are of different category of this. So like copyright. But your your, your so slides so are not moving, Pradeep. Yeah, yeah. I still not moving. So now it will move. Actually, so there yeah. is a problem yeah. if I go for presentation mode. Okay. So that's yeah. why I'll go for this display mode. Yeah, it is coming. Yeah. So then, <clears throat> so this is uh, these four uh, images I put. So like uh, books, copyright, and this belongs to this intellectual property and this design as well as intellectual property. And this, of course, design and trade secret as well. So this, uh, for detail, you can um, you may please visit WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization website, for detail about this intellectual property. So intellectual property is the right on our intellectual property. I, I, can, I just uh, made it read this intellect and rights. So okay, and property. So so our intellectual, um, uh, whatever um, inputs are actually our rights. So right, that is a right on our intellectual input for the development or anything that we create. So IP, for example, patents, copyright, trademarks is protected in a law which we can earn recognition or financial benefits from our invention or creation. So types of IPR, as I told you, so in India, uh, actually this IPR um, um, recently government has taken serious in uh, initiatives for um, making people aware of this intellectual property. Earlier in India, it was not uh, much significantly, it was uh, popular and as well also people are not aware of it. Since 1990, it is intellectual property is slowly, slowly that um, this particular aspect is growing now. It is actually government is really seriously is interested to make people aware and so that we can have more patents and we can have claim uh, on our uh, creation. <clears throat> so types of IPR, so like copyrights, patents, trademarks, industrial designs, geographical indicators, indications and trade secrets. So although these are specifically for India, in many cases some are like geographical indications like in U.S. geographical indexes are not considered as IPR, but they have some other similar uh, names for these particular aspects. However, in India, these are the major categories that IPR can be distinguished. So this is, we let us uh, talk about copyright. Copyright is a legal term used to describe the right that creators have over their literary and artistic works. Works covered by copyright range from books, music, paintings, sculpture, and films to computer programs. So this is important, Com computer programs as well. Databases, advertisements, maps, and technical drawings. So these are actually is protected by computer copyright. So first ever Copyright Act India was enacted in 1914. Therefore, Indian Copyright Act 1957 was introduced. So during, you can see that during British rule itself, uh, we have a copyright act. However, we have started that India has, after um, India became independent, they have started their own uh, policies and all. So the first Indian Copyright Act came into place in 1957. And amendments were being uh, made in six times, like 1982, 84, 92, 94, 99, 2000, 2012. So that's being 2012. So what does a copyright protect? So this is important to understand. What does a copyright protect? So original works, the literature, music, art, photography, cinema, film, or even a computer program. The copyright protects most of the works that are available in tangible form. So it has to be in tangible form. So, so it is not intangible. So you can see and feel. So physically you can see and feel. That is tangible form. So including lyrics to a song, tunes, pictures, uh, maybe tunes, how we can have in tangible, tangible form. So in musicians, you know very well. So they have writings on some, some they have symbols to write those tunes and all. Pictures, graphics, sculptures, piece of architecture, sound recording, 
drama, choreographed work, parodies, signatures, etc. So these are all tangible forms. So the term original in the copyright law means the word originate with the author. So this original is different from what is described in patent laws. There is no requirement, requirement for novelty or uniqueness as there is in patent law. So, so this is important in the copyright law. So there is no question of requirement of novelty and uniqueness as there is in patent law. So copyright law protects the expression of idea, not itself. So that is why, since we talked about the tangible form, so definitely, so uh, this idea cannot be, cannot have a copyright. So it has to be expressed in some form. So then only that means in tangible form. So in that case, only copyright law can protect the whatever create we create on our own independently in original. So what is covered by copyright? Again, let us look at it pictorically. So literary, literary work, film work, dramatic, musical, artistic, sound recording, etc. So what not covered by copyright? Ideas, as I told you, facts cannot be copyrighted, recipes are not copyrighted, works lacking originality, that means phone book, phone book is not copyrightable, names, titles and short phrases, those are not copyrightable. So these are not covered by copyright. <coughs> so what are the rights of the copyright owner? So this is another important aspect of our copyright law. The copyright gives a complete and exclusive rights to the owner of the work. Owner can choose to reproduce the work and authorize someone else to do it. Any derivative work that comes from the original work carried out by the owner. The owner can also distribute copies of his hard work to the public in any form that is sale or transfer of ownership, rent the work, lease the work, etc. Any other copyrighted work can be performed and displayed readily in public. So these are of the rights of the owner. So can I register copyright? So in majority of countries and according to the Bern Convention, copyright protection is obtained automatically without a need of registration or other formalities. So it does not offer any copyright registration. So that means once you produce it, like you, if you release the book or anything, if in your thesis, so that is once that is owned by the copy, uh, under the protected under the copyright law. So how long does a copyright protection last? So economic rights have a time limit, which can have according to the national law. So depending on the country, you can have the economic rights. In those countries which are members of Bern Convention, so who are the members of the Bern Convention? Time limit is is equal or no longer than or longer than generally 50 years after the creator's date. So now next let us discuss about the patents. A patent is an exclusive right granted for an invention. A patent provides the patent owner with the right to decide how or whether the invention can be used by others. In exchange for this right, the patent owner makes technical information about the invention publicly available in the published patent document. So there will be a published patent document, so which will be published by the patent office of respective countries. So those details will be there. Of course, there are certain issues that generally they keep some secrets in the processes so that it's simply straight that it, um, it cannot be copy. So that is why uh, that is obviously this well known fact that some hidden facts are there inside the patent. If in them, so patents, but uh, all the things, whatever uh, processes, all developments, all these things are published in some form in particularly say like in a patent office they publish in the journal as a brief summary then also in the and the patent is 
is available in the patent office website. So it is covered, patents, it is covered in India under the Act called Patent Act 1970. So it is covered under the Act called Patent Act 1970. Of course, it has been amended in two times in 1999 and 1992. And it extends the entire country. Okay. So it extends in the entire country. The procedure for granting patents, patent takes long time, minimum two years. However, the patent right comes in force from the date of publication by the central government agency like Indian Patent Office by the notification in the official case. So date of patent is the date of filing the application. So that is why, although maybe after two years, patent may be granted, but the validity of the patent starts from the date of acceptance, that means date of filing of the patent. So what does a patent Right, what right does a patent provide? A patent owner has the right to decide who may or may not use the patented invention for the period in which the invention is protected. Patent protection means that the only the invention cannot be commercially made, used, distributed, imported, or sold by others without the patent owner's consent. Of course, maybe. If you have a process, maybe it's in small scale, if you want to do it in the laboratory, that is a different issue. But however, it cannot be made commercially, so this is important, and used as well, and distributed, and or imported, or sold by others without the patent owner's consent. So this is the patent right. How long does a patent protection last? Patent protection is granted for a limited period, generally for 20 years, from the filing date of the application. Renewal of the patent by paying a nominal fee is necessary every year. So once this, say for example, patent is accept, got accepted and approved and patent has been granted maybe after two years or three years, that is okay. So but after that, once patent has been granted, so the patent owner has to renew the patent every year. <coughs> so paying a nominal fee. So it's about 800 rupees for Indian patent. So in such cases, of course, so uh, Indian Patent Office may ask you whether you are going for some kind of um, uh, like uh, any development in commercializing that for commercializing that patent or not. Anyway, so it will be for um, for twenty years it can be renewed. So after that, so it will not be valid. So that is why I hope you remember I have a very good example on this issue. So like, for example, you must be knowing about generic drugs, which are very cheap. And however, these branded drugs are very costly. Say, for example, a cough syrup may cost you about 14, 15 rupees, or even the Rebiprazole. Rebiprazole uh, cost about uh, maybe, I think, <coughs> the tablet that cost about 10 rupees or something like that. However, in um, outside in branded, say it's about 120, 140 like that. So that is the difference. And why it is the difference? Because once the patent right has been, uh, uh, that patent uh, limit, that period is over after 20 years. So anybody can make that particular drug. So that is, so that is why, so drug will be, uh, because the, the patent owner, say like some company, will not be the exclusive owner of that patent. So anybody, ABC, can make the product. So that is why, the, uh, since 20 years is the uh, limit, so that is why company wants to make significant amount of money because whatever they have invested on that particular development of the drug, or maybe they have purchased from an owner. So in that case, company will definitely try very hard to uh, get as much as possible in 20 years. So after 20 years, so there will not be patent or uh, right, uh, sorry, it's uh, no right on the patent, so anybody can produce. So that is how many drugs become cheaper. So after 20 years of the patent. So that is like paracetamol and all, all is very cheap. It's just because this, it's very old drug. So is a patent valid in every country? So this is another important issue. So no. So there is nothing like global or world patent. 
patents are territorial rights. So patent is a territorial right. Like if I patent, uh, if I patent Indian patent, so it is only applicable for Indian, uh, within India only. So it is not applicable to USA or UK or Europe or China. So that is why US, China, any anybody want, can make that product. However, so if you want to protect, then first you have to go to WIPO. So there you have to file a patent first, then publish. Then you go to respective countries where you feel that you have a trick for violation of the patent right. So in, it's, in such cases, of course, you need a significant amount of money to protect your rights in other countries. However, it may, uh, of course, uh, make you uh, rich. Uh, you may gain some financial rights on that uh, your patent. So in general, the exclusive rights are only applicable in the country or region in which the patent has been filed or granted in accordance with the law of that country or region. Refusal of a patent in one country does not mean that it will be terminated in all countries. So next is a trademark. So a trademark is a sign capable of distinguishing the goods or services of one enterprise from those of the other enterprise. You can, I hope you remember. So like trademark, uh, this is Coca-Cola, Microsoft, Intel, Sony, Kultzberg, all these things, Lego, all these things are trademarks. So uh, simply, so trademark that back in ancient times when artisans used to put their signatures or mark on their products. So trademarks. So that means uh, this is your product like that. So you cannot copy that. And say, for example, say Coca-Cola. You cannot make it, make anything and sell it like putting this brand. So this is the trademark can protect. So once, but however, once you see this uh, logo, like Coca-Cola, there you understand that, oh, this is Coca-Cola. So you ensure, so this logo, you will ensure the quality of the product. So then, which will definitely attract the buyers to buy that particular product. So that is why these trademarks are important. Just because you have established your business and you already earn your reputation, so in such cases, definitely trademark will help you to attract and it is just in flash uh, uh, on your eyes. So you can understand, oh, it's a, like a flash on your eyes. Oh, this is Coca-Cola. Oh, it's a Canon or Mercedes Benz. So that means this is the mark of, actually trademark is the mark of quality of a product as well. So this will give the advantage of this particular uh, company or product for in the market. So that marks it was covered. It is covered under uh, India in under Act called Trademark Act 1999. This Act came into force in September 15, 2003. So it doesn't mean that India does not have a trademark. However, it replaced the Trade and Merchandise Mark Act in 1950. So it's around 1957-58. So Indian government has started all these things Act. So they have their uh, they produce they. Uh, already they placed their uh, our Indian uh, national acts for each and every item related to IPR. However, later after that, you can see in 99, so Indian government and other agencies, they felt that those, there should be some changes in the Trademark Act. So in such cases, so they made, so this is new act called Trademark Act 99. So then, of course, it, this act came into force in 2003 after several amendments and refinements. So what kinds of trademark can be registered? A word or a combination of words, letters and numerals can perfectly constitute a trademark. But trademarks may also consist of drawings, symbols, three-dimensional features, such as the shape and packaging of goods, and non-visible signs such as sound or fragrances or color sets used as it has distinguishing features and the possibilities are almost limitless. So different uh, symbols of trademark. So if this R is seen, then used with a registered trademark. See all, uh, so once this is that finally, registration has been given. So this is TM is used with trademarks, not yet registered. However, it is in the process of registering, registration. So this is SM, so means used in service marks, not yet registered, but it is in the process of registration. However, 
simple R means both register trademark and service form means you can use TM, SM till you get a registration. After registration, you cannot use SM and TM and directly you case this R. So trademark and service mark. So what is the difference here? So a trademark in the legal sense can be any name, word, symbol or combination thereof that identifies a business product. It has been used by most companies to distinguish their products from those offered by others. That's why it's a kind of mark of quality that has been established or is we can say brand name. So in other words, your brand name can be your company's trademark. So what is a service mark? Legally speaking, service marks are subcategory of trademarks. Although it may be same type of device as a trademark. Service mark can be anything that distinguishes your service from those of other providers. The slogan used by companies are often treated as service mark. So it is service mark is used by service companies like restaurants and all this, like McDonald's. So what right does a trademark registration provide? A trademark registration will confer an exclusive right to you. To the use of this registered trademark. So this implies that a trademark can be exclusively used by its owner or licensed to another party for use in return for payment. So that means say Coca Coca Cola, you, you know very well. So we have some Coca Cola bottling plant plants, Pepsi bottling plants. So that means this they used to bring the uh, things and uh, this raw material then do the bottling in nearby uh, Okay, it's near Rani, you know very well, there is a uh, bottling company of Coca-Cola, Pepsi and others. So how long does a trademark protection last? In term, the term trademark registration can vary, but usually for 10 years. However, it can be renewed indefinitely on the payment of additional fees. So basically, trademark is, there is no time limit for trademark, so that may it gives for the till the company lasts or uh, maybe owner lasts. So trademark rights are uh, a private right and protection is enforced through court orders. So next is uh, industrial design. You can see these products. So like Mercedes, this so these uh, cars, you can, we have different cars like Maruti Suzuki or maybe Hyundai, Honda, then maybe <coughs> so others like uh, so many other Tata. So you can see all the cars, but those cars, every car is the design of every car is different from the others. So that makes the it's a mark of that particular company. It's like all, all it is quite different from trademark, however, still it is similar. Uh, and uh, you can see here, so this whatever bands or a Marty or or maybe Hyundai or Honda produces or Volkswagen produces, you cannot make the same car, same design car in even without uh, taking uh, even uh, personally as well. So and similarly, uh, these uh, things, any bathroom fittings or anything, uh, anything that you use, we can have, you can protect our designs. So a design may consist of three dimensional features such as the shape of, or surface of an article or two dimensional features such as patterns, lines or colors. So what kind of protection does an industrial design right so far? <laughs> in principle, the owner of a registered industrial design or of a design patent has the right to prevent third parties from making, selling or importing articles bearing the or embodying a design which is a copy subst or substantially copy of the protected design when such acts are undertaken for commercial purposes. So this is the uh, <coughs> this is the industrial design laws says that. So that means you cannot you cannot copy it, even you cannot substantially copy, maybe 90 percent, whatever that may be defined under the law. So you cannot simply copy uh, anything, any product to sell in commercially, produce and sell it commercially. What kind of products can benefit from the industrial design protection? Industrial designs are applied to a wide variety of products of industry, handicraft items from packages and containers to 
to furnishing and household goods from lighting equipments to jewelry and from electronic devices to textiles industrial designs may also be relevant to graphic symbols graphical user interface and logos you can see here so this is head and shoulder so this is i think uh, some shampoo as well this is painting and so all this even the bottle is different and the design and color all these things are different so say say for example you cannot copy the same bottle same design and sell it and then you, you cannot copy all these things so all this is a shampoo so four shampoo bottles are there you can see so they have all the bottles have different designs so that means so that is the thing so you simply cannot copy it so anything even the motorcycles you can see even the cycles even you can see plastic sealers so they have maybe in the almost a similar shape but not exactly the same shape even the shape and even the design in the plastic uh, chairs are slightly different so that is why you cannot copy the same thing so how are industrial designs are protected <coughs> in most countries an industrial design needs to be registered in order to protect it under industrial design law as a registered design in some countries industrial designs are protected under the patent law as a design patent so depending on the country so you can have registered design or design patents industrial design laws in some countries grant without registration as well time and scope limited protection to so called unregistered industrial designs also they can be given so depending on the particular national law and the kind of design industrial designs may also be protected as works or art under the copyright law so that is why you can see here even that is some designs also can be protected under the copyright law once that means once you produce produce you you have you are protected under copyright law. so it is depending on it depends on the particular national law we have designs patents so next is gi geography indications <coughs> an indication word logo or combination on goods products that indicates the geographical origin of those goods products and ensures by law the quality of those goods to be exactly as specified in its registration so this is important so of course design indicates the geographical origin and fine so this is important so during the registration what are the specification you have given for that particular product it has to be the same to use the gi then what is the advantage of getting gi it is you can see so this is duration of gi is 10 years and can be indefinitely so geographical indication of goods registration protection act in 1990 is the actually indian act then what is the advantage so i have highlighted here you can see here it ensures the law law by the law the quality of those goods to be exactly as specified under registration so while registering that for gi so we specify some of the properties of the product so those has to be matched when if you use the logo then what's the advantage of using the gi logo so once you have the advantage of getting take um, putting the gi logo that means your quality is ensured so that means a um, a particular buyer again uh, so they can uh, this will ensure the quality and then buyer can easily buy the product so geographical indications are defined by the World Trade Organization or TRIPS agreement to be indications which identify a good as originating in the country, territory, sorry, it is in the territory, <coughs> originating in the territory <coughs> so, of a member, that means World Trade Organization, or a region or locality in that territory where a given quality reputation or other characteristic of the good is essentially attributable to its geographical origin so trips article 22 one. so one of the first gi system is the one used in france from the early part of the 20th century known as 
So appellation do origin and control. So AOC is a French certification granted to certain French geographical indications for wine, cheese, butters, and other agricultural products, all under the species of government to brew. So you can see it's actually it started in 1411. Can you imagine? So ours is just uh, 99. Okay. So France started in 1411. So it's particularly for wine. And because they had a problem with the wine, they they can say they sell wine, different wine in the name of their particular place. Then they had a, they have to enforce some law. Then 1919. The French started the modern law, 1990 extended to other agricultural products. So this also is a AOC, you can see here, AOC. So this is under, uh, protected under uh, AOC, France. So examples of GI, so this is the GI number one. <coughs> so problem of GI started in India when Darjeeling tea has particular flavor and quality so in that particular days those days so what happens to people uh, any tea any kind of tea like assam tea or anything so any low quality tea they started selling as a darjeeling tea. so then what happens the reputation of darjeeling tea has gone down so in such cases what they did then they give in the glo so they have specified what kind of Darjeeling tea, what kind of, what kind of taste it can have, what kind of uh, flavor or anything that, is, uh, that exists in Darjeeling tea. So that if they have those things, so then this Darjeeling tea can be, uh, this anything, anybody produces Darjeeling tea can use that logo. <coughs> so obviously, they have a grant in some authority like the Board of India. So they will say that yes, it is fine. So Darjeeling tea, so this Lipton Darjeeling tea is okay, it's fine. So it's a pure Darjeeling tea, <coughs> no mix. So like Kashmir Pospina, then Kuluswal, GIM19, so this one also GI may be there. So then, so involvement in GI, registered proprietor, the applicant of GI, renewal of the GI, inspection body meetings, authorized user, the user of GI in business, can use the GI on the goods as the exclusive right to use the GI. So what happens? So any organization can file for GI. So once they file for GI, they have given the specifications. However, they cannot, that organization, they cannot claim right on the GI. The only thing they have filed the GI, they obtained the GI for say, for example, Assam or some places. So in that case, so this is the quality, yes. So then anybody wants to use this particular logo, so they have to ensure the quality. That's all. So requirement for GI, goods of originating from a territory of a country or region or locality, possess quality, reputation or other characteristics of their geographical origin, produced by users of that area, history of goods, specification of the goods. So you need, so produce this one. So if you want to, anybody can, of course, any individual cannot uh, register GI. So they has to be there. They have to be maybe some government organizations, some some specifications are there of organizations. So which who can register, go for registering GI. So goods originating from the territory. So they have to check, possess a quality, reputation, other characteristics of the general origin, produced by users of the area, history of the goods, specification of the goods, those things. And you must be knowing about the Rasagula case. Still, I think that the uh, uh, case is uh, still uh, going on. So Rasagula, all of the time, West Bengal claimed that Rasagula belongs to West Bengal. However, what happened? And uh, then uh, suddenly they West Bengal, they put that uh, GF for GF. Then Orisha people, they thought that actually the Rasagula was originated in Orisha. However, when they could not produce anything, uh, any document that will confirm that actually Rasagula was originated in uh, Orisha. Then West Bengal got the GI logo, GI for Rasagula. However, uh, because West Bengal has uh, written some document. However, recently I heard that 
Odisha also somebody found some written document on G uh, Rasagula. So that's why still the case is still going on. But however, uh, so once you put that specification all the things, uh, yeah, so we need some history. So this is important. A records on the history of the goods. So this is important. So it will say that this has been originated anything want, we want to go for GI. So it has been originated from a particular place. So there must be some document which will prove that particular aspect of that particular good. So this is a certificate. This is a Muga Silk of Assam. So this is a GI of Muga. This is the first GI of GI number um, 384. So this is the first GI from Assam. So, so benefits of GI registration maintains the quality standard of goods, brings customer trust, fetches premium value of goods, market reach at the state, national, and international level, employment generation and security organizes the sector of producers. So you can see here. So it maintains the quality of the standard because in the, during the registration we have already specified. The uh, property and all the uh, we have given all the specification about the good. Bring the customer trust. That means once you put the GI logo, customer will understand that yes, this is a quality product that is real. Uh, say Muga, for example, if you get the Muga GI logo, then you will understand yes, this is a pure Muga, not toss or other thing. Then fetch a premium bill of the goods. So that will obviously will uh, cost of the goods will go up once you put that particular mark. Mark reached at a state, national, and interest level. And once you put the GI logo, that means interest level also, they will understand that yes, so this is a original product. So, employment generation and security organize, organizes the sector of producer. So, producers, so they will also uh, have the benefit of customer satisfaction and trust. So, GI from Assam, so this is Muga Silk of Assam. So, this is the logo that we use for Muga Silk. And this is Assam Orthodox GI. So this is from Tespur DC, GI number 142, GI number 435, uh, Caribbean long ginger, and Johar, Johar ice also. We got the GI. So then trade circuits. So trade circuits are IP rights <coughs> on confidential information which may be sold or licensed the unauthorized acquisition use or disclosure of such secret information in a manner contrary to the honest commercial practice by others is registered as an unfair practice and violation of the trade secret protection so basically trade secret although it's a ip however ip right it is however uh, if uh, it's a confidential information, so it is not documented. So then what is the advantage of the trade secret? Say for example, say Coca-Cola. Uh, everybody knows that Coca-Cola is a trade secret, exact composition of the Coca-Cola is not known by anybody else except the company few personals. Then what is the advantage? Say for example, Coca-Cola has say file the patent. So once they file the patents, so everybody will know about the content of the Coca-Cola and that Coca-Cola, that patent will be valid for 20 years only, so their business will go down. I hope you remember when we were a child, maybe I think class, maybe two, three or maybe four, that time we have seen Coca-Cola Fanta. So now we have grown old. So last 50, more than 50 years, Coca-Cola is running. So just because of the trade secret. So that is the advantage of a trade secret. However, what is the disadvantage? Once somehow, so like uh, something they do, then if they, somebody knows about the secret, so then, uh, so Coca-Cola company cannot take any legal action on it until and unless they can confirm about the theft or other dishonesty. But once anybody somehow get the what is the content of the Coca-Cola? Anybody, anybody can produce. So this is the danger. However, there is an advantage as well. So next is 
in general to qualify as a great secret the information must be commercially available because it is secret and be known only to a limited group of persons be subject to a reasonable steps taken by the rightful holder of the information to keep it secret including the use of confidentiality agreements for the business partners and employees so kind of information protected by the trade secret any confidential business information which provides an enterprise a competitive edge and it's known to others may be protected as a trade secret trade secrets encompass both technical information such as information concerning manufacturing processes experimental research data software algorithms and commercial information such as distribution methods list of suppliers clients and advertising strategies so this is the trade secret in key so basically trade secret has two different dimensions one technically technical information another is, is commercial information so both are kind of secret hold by a very few personals of that particular company or organization <coughs> kind of information protected then a trade a trade secret may also be made up a combination of elements each of which by itself is in public domain but where the combination which is kept secret provide a competitive advantage other examples of information that may be protected by the trade secrets include financial information formulas and recipes and source codes say for example you have some formula definitely of like coca cola or recipe then where from you are getting all this <coughs> uh, whatever that components so those are sick maybe also be secret kept secret kind of protection a trade secret offer so depending on the legal system the legal protection trade secret from part of general concept of protection against unfair competition or based on specific provisions or case law on the protection on confidential information final determination whether trade secret protection is violated or not depends on the circumstances in individual case so as it will tell you so so a court uh, that company has to prove that so that trade secret all these laws are violated so that is quite difficult and circumstance will always will tell you whether it is a really violation of the trade secret laws or not so in general unfair practices in respect to secret information include breach of contract breach of confidence and industrial or commercial espionage so these are actually unfair practices mainly we can uh, any company can Uh, claim that somebody is doing unfair practices they have stolen my formula or recipe whatever it may be so but the company has to prove that otherwise they cannot prosecute any person so the trade secret owner however cannot stop others from using the same technical commercial information if they acquired or develop such information independently by themselves through their own r&d reverse engineering or marketing analysis etc since trade secrets are not made public since trade secrets are not made public as i told you yes say for example coca coca cola formula so is somebody say analyze very precisely in a laboratory if somebody finds the contents then they produce a similar product like coca cola of course they cannot use the brand name coca cola they have to have different brand names like thumbs up already it is there okay so then you can use say coca cola pepsi thumbs up all are similar colas okay however the recipe is only that company knows so if we want to sell the product by if i somehow come to know about this uh, content of that then we can we have to use uh, some new brand name so that means it is uh, again you have to have trademark so then you have to establish it then finally said that yes we are similar to coca cola then only you will have a commercial benefit so unlike patents they do not provide defensive protection as being prior 
So there is no protection of the uh, at such the components if somebody finds out. For example, if a specific process of producing compound X has been protected by a trade secret, someone else can obtain the patent or utility model on the same invention if the inventor arrived at the invention independently. So that is what we are saying. Somebody can file the patent, say for example, Coca-Cola content we know, now we can file a patent. Because it is a trade secret, nobody knows, so you can file a patent. So no problem. Filing a patent on Coca-Cola content also it is allowed until unless you got on your own, not by stealing from the Coca-Cola company somehow. So what is the prerequisite for protection of your intellectual property, right? So that means particular patents. We we'll talk a little bit more about the patents. So how much time I have? How much time I have? So maybe uh, I think I already spoke about 35 to 40 minutes. Maybe I have to 10 minutes. I have to conclude. So what is the prerequisite for protection of your intellectual property? It should be unique, novel, particularly patents. So it should be unique or novel. It should be. It should not be reported before. It should be non. So these are the three criteria for a particular patent to be granted. So number one, it has to be novel. Secondly, it should not be reported before, and it should be non. -novel. That means it has to be completely original, novel. So completely new, <coughs> still you can find some newness. Secondly, it should not be reported earlier. Say, for example, somebody has written the thesis, some recipe or some invention. Then once the thesis is published, you cannot write for, you cannot go for patenting them. However, before submission of the thesis or before, before getting the PhD degree, you can have the patent or be even before publishing the result in any form. <coughs> And then it should be non-obvious. Yes, it can be novel. That is fine. But that means there is a slight, maybe minor modifications of the existing uh, known facts. But however, they should not be uh, obvious. That means if somebody just say uh, A plus B already D, so maybe somebody will make A plus B or similar thing to C so that this can be patented. No, it cannot be patented. You have to prove that it is non-obvious. That means A, B, C, Tom, Dick and Harry cannot think of this kind of uh, permutation and combination. So this is important here to get a patent. You must prove that it is non-obvious. So when we cannot obtain the right over intellectual output, if we have already reported in the public domain in any form, so you cannot obtain that. IPR. So can you apply for our right and publish? Yes, that is not a problem. So once you uh, publish it, so you cannot patent it, but you can patent it. Just file the patent, get a number, then you can publish. It. That is what happened even to me in 2015. I have filed for the patent. Then 16, I have published the same, uh, same work. So, but I got the patent because I have already submitted the patent before I publish. So how do I apply for patents or any other intellectual property rights? Prepare a brief write-up about the work and approach Aztec IPR cell. It's not IPR cell, sorry. Patent uh, Information Center or other agencies, patent attorneys for final form of the claim. It is for Assam only. That is what I have Aztec. Assam Science, Technology and Environmental Council. They have patent information cell. I used to go to it so that you don't need to worry about a patent attorney. They will assist it and they will search for patent document, your whatever invention, whether it is known in the literature or in any form or not, and is really patentable or not. They will check it and then they will tell you that yes, you, could, you should go for patent. What will happen if you file without go to STEC or uh, patent attorney? Yes, you can go. You can directly individually file for a patent then, but you will lose your time and money. So once you go to patent attorney or maybe to say STEC or maybe some uh, IPR sale of different institute, then what will happen? They will check 
really it is known or unknown or not otherwise you will file you have to pay some fees say about uh, 8000 rupees to tell for filing the patent more than slightly more than 8000 rupees so if you want to go by a patent attorney so no problem because they will search for it if you go individually then you have to pay only eight to nine thousand so then it will go waste if it is really no they will decline to give you a patent patent office also will search seriously about that so patent and then apply to patent office so then it is if it is sure that the claim is unique non-obvious and not reported we can directly send the application to a patent office to ensure that our claim is unique we need to have a thorough check using various database like government agencies attorneys have expertise in this aspect we need to write the claim in proper format with the help of government agencies or patent attorneys we have to pay a nominal fee in the form of draft in favor of control of patents nowadays of course online you can pay for it the patent attorneys charge a descent upon a fee it's about twenty thousand 15 to 20,000 they will charge or maybe 30,000 they will charge depending on your their work so for the patent filing so but if you take you you check since we are all colleagues of different colleges uh, different institutes since we write our publications we can uh, we draft our manuscript and we can send and I believe that we can also write a patent that is what I have implemented in Guwahati University if somebody goes through me, they don't need to go for patent attorneys. They don't need to waste their money in giving those that much money from the patent uh, attorney. So I go through it and and then we can uh, give to Aztec for checking it. And finally, we can file the patent. So that is not a problem. So this is the address of patent office clinic. So government agencies for extending the support in IPR activities, Assam Science Technology and Environment Council, as I told you, Department of Science and Technology in New Delhi, National Research and Development Corporation, NRDC, New Delhi. So I think uh, I need to close it because already it is time for me to close it. So this is a uh, TIFAC, a DST. So DST TIFAC has uh, this they have really uh, in taking initiative in uh, opening IPR cells and patent information centers in different science and technology state councils. So they have direct link. And this state science and technology council has uh, the patent information facility facilities centers. Then they have links of IPR cells in government and private institutes. So this is the actually link to DST. So objective of patent facilitating center DST type five so technology information forecasting and assessment council so i will not uh, talk about all these things because almost the uh, time is up so this is uh, technology information forecasting assessment council so these are the technology vision 235 objective of typhab typhab foresight innovation patent facilitation linkages typhab internship foresight training so they have different you can go to dst website you can go for it and this is Kiron IPR is a very important uh, step for women scientists, mm -hmm. so they can go for patent uh, training. Then MSME, internist schemes, that's, uh, this is NRDC, so I don't want to uh, go on programs of NRDC. So this is WIPO, World Intellectual Property Organization, established by the WIPO Convention 1967. In July 1970, Convention was establishing World Intellectual Property Organization, entered into force. It is an umbrella organization of the United Nations to promote IP activities throughout the world. Headquarters Geneva, Switzerland. So new logo of WIPO. Actually, this is the old logo. This is a new logo. So these are uh, these blue colors links the organization with United Nations. The seven colors, uh, seven strips are here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven curve lines represent the seven elements of IP as set out in WIPO Convention. One literary, artistic, and scientific works, performances of performing artists, phonograms, and broadcast, invention on in all fields of Hindu human endeavor, scientific discoveries, industrial designs, trademarks, service marks, and commercial names and designations, 
then protection against unfair competition and all other rights resulting from intellectual property activity in the industrial scientific literary or artistic fields so this i'll skip it uh, so finally uh, i like to acknowledge final support from aztec particularly st they give in interim supports for our ipsl and he is siddhartha devnath he is very knowledgeable person in terms of ipa uh, so you may please approach if you have any queries so this uh, thank you very much for kind attention i believe i could finish on time thank you very much okay so thank you so much thank you so much for your enlightening deliberation uh, i now open this online platform for interaction may i now request our participants uh, to put forward their questions to the speaker for interaction or to present their responses if any participants please hello sarda uh, this is professor jogen kolita yes sir yeah. yes sir Yeah, I just uh, want to know from Professor Pradeep Kapoor that yeah. why patent this takes so long, so long to give the result from the date of application to the time of getting this patent uh, certificate. It's a long way. So why it is so long? Yeah. That's so actually, I mean. uh, so it uh, of course nowadays still it is a little bit faster. Say what happens that uh, patent office they have a limited number of staff, but number of applications are very high. So because of the high number, and also I I found that the patent office very carefully search, and then each and every item, each and every patent, whether it is really patentable or not, it's a really hard task. I even I found on my own patent recently I I got it. So there, what happens? They used to search each and every data, whatever. Even I could not find. They found it. Then finally, they have sent a query that really this is non-obvious and it is really it is different from uh, other uh, whatever established in the future. They will send your references, all those things. Then they will uh, make a query and finally they will have a, also a hearing. So it will take little more time. Because that they have definitely limited number of staffs and also a huge number of applications. They have to go for patent databases. They search. They carefully. Then then they will put questions. Then they will go for uh, this uh, kind of uh, hearings. Then only finally they go for giving the patent. Nowadays still it is faster. Somebody gets at least in maybe two years. But earlier it is too long. It was. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Welcome. Very nice deliberation. Very okay. informative. Thank oh, thank you. Any other questions from the side of the participants? Uh, someone had raised hands. Pukon, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, we have a IPR cell in our college. Okay. And uh, would you please uh, tell us uh, what uh, will be the functioning of the cell? Actually, we are busy with uh, organizing such type of uh, webinar or seminar. Yeah. But uh, what will be the function, the proper function in our college, real base? What uh, can we do now? Yeah, actually, uh, uh, IPR cell mainly see it is a kind of a DST uh, is a part of DST and all this program, right? DST, STEC, and IPR cells. What we do, we generally go for awareness programs. Also, say for example, you have local uh, locality in your own locality, you yeah. can talk to people if you have any inventions. Then your uh, IPR expert in your IPR cell, they can actually check really what is happening there, what they are, what is the invention and all the backgrounds and all. They, then they can go for, they can forward it to uh, Aztec for detailed uh, analysis. Then finally giving the patent that you can do. And also if, say for example, in our university earlier there was no system of, uh, say. A reimbursement of this uh, patent fee. We do not reimburse patent attorney fee. Nowadays, mm -hmm. we reimburse patent fee, say about eight to nine thousand. So then, also you can uh, you can make the uh, our uh, your teachers your.
faculty members as well as the students to aware about this and if you have any inventions then you can you can give the final support for patenting initially let them file it then finally once it get approved then you can reimburse the money so that can be a good steps of ipr sales that is what i do i generally go for seminars and other things and plus um, yeah, i do not go of course in the localities for ipr campaign then also i assist whoever write a patent how to write all these things i check it uh, if they require it then i forward it to astec then i talk to uh, the person for concern that uh, dr devnath then uh, they file directly then whatever the fees and all they submit to me then i send to uh, university for reimbursement and nowadays you know very well grading and all it's a patent and publications are very important so that is what you can make it and you can encourage the teachers that means your colleagues and students for that patent and uh, grant getting patent and all and you can give financial and you, you it will not be very high say for example hardly maybe two three will come in the uh, entire year so that will not be very high so that can i think you can uh, take some initiatives yeah. anything they design and all you can file a patent so that you can do okay okay yeah. thank, thank you. you sir thank uh, you very much sir so uh, i can see some participants have raised their hands please um, you can uh, come up with your questions Or if there are any uh, responses that you, know, you would want, like to share. So, Arda, maybe they are writing on the set box. Can on you check it? On the chat box, yes, sir. I'll just yeah. check it, sir. If yes. questions are there, then you can put it to yes. Professor Pukon. And the suggestions what Professor Pukon has made uh, in yes, query, okay, responding to the queries of Lilakanto uh, Bortako, the principal. I think IPR cell has got the actual direction. It's very important. I'm very happy that uh, IPR unit of Morigao College will be able to function in coordination with Professor Pukon as well as okay, get some services from ASTEC. Yes, sir. So I have uh, checked the chat box, but I cannot see any questions. However, there are some participants who have raised their hands. So I would just like to request them to, uh, you know, to come up with their questions, to put forward their questions to our honorable speaker. Some hands have been raised. Okay, if no question, then go to the next program. Yeah. I would like to thank Professor Pradeep Fukun uh, for uh, listening to him was uh, reaching indeed. Thank you so much, sir. And we look thank forward. Uh, yes, we, we look forward, you know, uh, towards you know interacting with you in, in the future. Uh, now uh, it is the uh, time that we move on to the next uh, presentation. Our speaker, our distinguished speaker, needs no introduction actually. Uh, he is a colossal of knowledge an institution in himself, who leaves his mark wherever he treads upon. He is not new to Morigao College. Circumstances have been such that uh, in different phases of ups and downs faced by Morigao College, he has been associated with it like a guardian and more like a parent. Respected participants, we are honored beyond words to have with us Professor Krishna Gopal Bhattacharya, retired professor of chemistry, Guwahati University. Prior to his superannuation in April 2016, Professor Bhattacharya had served as the head department of chemistry, Guwahati University. He was also the dean, faculty of science, Guwahati University. Professor Bhattacharya had held the position of the director of the then UGC Academic Staff College from 1997 to 2012. He has also held the prestigious position of chairman of the state level Environment Impact Assessment Authority, ASAM, 
under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, Government of India, from March 2017 to February 2020. He has had research projects from World Bank, DST, DBT, Ministry of Environment and Forests, ISRO, DRDO, and other organizations. His research interests include air, water, and soil chemistry, heterogeneous catalysts, and environmental chemistry. He has supervised more than 70 doctoral theses. With about 11,986 citations, Professor Bhattacharya has an age index of 44 and an I index of 90. In a recent study conducted by Stanford University US on top 2% scientists worldwide in various fields, Professor Krishna Gopal Bhattacharya has been hailed and he has been ranked third among top Indian scientists and 235th among world scientists in the field of environmental science. Currently, Professor Bhattacharya is with Assam Don Bosco University as a professor of chemistry. So I take this opportunity to welcome Professor Krishna Gopal Bhattacharya to this webinar. This platform is all yours, sir, and we are all yours. <coughs> Thank you very much, sir. And uh, in, the in the beginning, you can hear me, no? You can hear me? Okay. Yes, uh, yes we can hear. Yeah, yeah. In the beginning, uh, I congratulate uh, Professor Jogan Kolita, President, Governing Body, Principal, all the teachers, students, and other members of Morigao College for this 67th Foundation Day. I hope that the college will go from uh, further in its mission for edu higher education. Uh, my job has been made all the more easier by Professor Pradeep Fukan, who has been talking on IPF for almost uh, one hour. And he has explained all the different uh, aspects of IPR and uh, also the procedures, how to obtain IPR, etc., etc. So uh, in fact, actually, I do not have to go through all those things, but there may be some repetition here and there. But I will try to give you some other angles of this intellectual property rights. Uh, please tell me whether you can see my uh, presentation. You can see it, no? no can sir, you see my pre no, presentation? Yeah, it is coming. Yes, it sir. is coming. Yes, yes. Now it is coming. Okay. Okay. So, <coughs> uh, first, let, let us see some history. The first recorded patent for an industrial invention was granted as early as 1421, and that was done in Florence. And it was given to the architect and engineer Filippo Brunelleschi. The patent gave him a three-year monopoly. Actually, he manufactured a barge, some, some kind of mechanized barge, to transport marble from one area to another over the river. And that barge was the first patent uh, given to him. Uh, the manufacturing right and all the things are given to this Brunelleschi. Uh, but development of the modern patent system, uh, patents were systematically granted in Venice. Venice was again the place where patents have come to the fore for the first time. As of 1450, the system was there where they issued a decree by which uh, the government has issued a decree that any invention must be brought to the notice of the government so that there may not be uh, infringement. So therefore, this was the first uh, somewhat official law in 1450 when the Venetian government made it a rule that any invention must be brought to the notice of the government and uh, then the person will get a protection for 10 years. So that was in the, in the patent history. Then in 1641, North America granted its first patent to Samuel Winslow for a new method of making salt. Uh, no, he, he was uh, finding a new method for making salt from seawater and uh, they, that was given the first, uh, considered as the first patent of North America. That was given in 1641. Then uh, it, it was there for many many countries. Uh, it has been practiced, but until the patent came in 1790 in USA, 
uh, the patents are more or less regularized. The making uh, the, the first patent, uh, irregular case of patent, is the making of pot S and parless that was granted in 1836. That was considered as as the first patent. But then later on, uh, they, that was given uh, technically the patent number one in the world. Uh, later on, that patent number one is given to Senator John Ruggles, who was also architect of the Patent Act of 1836. His invention was a wheel traction system for steam locomotives. So, so he invented something for steam locomotives, and that was considered as the patent number one in the history of patents. Uh, if we see that number of patents, Pratipukon has given you some idea, number of patents in every country is increasing by jumps and jumps and uh, we have the latest data for 2019 in 2000 uh, I, I will explain this utility patent and design patent slightly later uh, in 2019 there were as many as six six lakh twenty one thousand four hundred and fifty three inventions or patents then design patent forty six thousand eight forty seven so every year uh, uh, 2020 data are not yet available so every year it is in a, in a uh, number of lakhs several lakhs patents are granted throughout the world it means that some new inventions now again it will be of interesting to know that who has the most patents in the world now this person is a japanese person who is uh, sunpei yamazaki actually his name is in the guinness book of world records uh, for the maximum number of patents. He has been granted 2,591 United States utility patents and has 9,700 worldwide patents, which is cumulative of more than 40 years of invention. That means he was patenting these over a period of 40 years, but then he has 2,591 US patents, uh, what are known as utility patents and 9,700 worldwide patents. He is uh, the Guinness World Book, uh, World Record Book uh, holder with respect to the maximum number of patents right now. He is a Japanese person, Shunpei Yamazaki. Now, uh, this is the latest ranking of the countries with respect to patents uh, they have granted. Again, the data are for 2019, 2020 that are not yet available because of the COVID and all the other problems. Uh, now, China has the maximum number of patents. In, in that year, 2019, China has 452,804 patents. China is first, followed by USA, 354,430, then Japan, then Europe, then Republic of Korea, Russian Federation, and then comes India. In 2019, Indian patents number 23,578. You can see how the uh, number of patents differ from country to country. China is, of course, uh, the topmost country, having the maximum number of patents, followed by USA, then Japan, then Europe, then Republic of Korea, Russian Federation, and India. India's position is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. India's position is 7. Not bad, considering that... Uh, our, our, our this patenting has started late, so maybe this is we consider this as not bad. We have we are seventh in the with respect to the world position of the number of patents. Then, uh, of course, um, uh, Pradeep Hukun has uh, talked of different types of patents. Now, normally, the patents are divided into four types one is called the utility patent, which I have already shown you. Utility patent is issued for the invention of a new and useful process. It may be a process, it may be a machine, it may be some type of manufacturer, it may be composition of matter or a new and useful improvement thereof. It generally permits its owner to exclude others from making. That means what, what is the right granted to the owner? It grants him the right to exclude others from making, using or selling the invention for a period of up to 20 years. 20 years is the period up to which he holds the patent from the date of patent application filing. Project Procon has explained all this. Subject to the payment of maintenance fees. Some maintenance fees have to be paid uh, year after year. Approximately 90% of the patent documents issued by the U.S. Patent Office in recent years have been utility patents and also referred to as patents for invention. That means these are the patents which you normally know as patents. 
they, they are related to new or useful process, machine, manufacturer, composition of matter, new and useful improvement, etc., etc. And 90% of the US patents belong to this category, utility patents. That means they, they are the category which has the maximum number of patents. Then second one is what is known as the design patent. Design, pa design patent is issued for a new original and ornamental design embodied in or applied to an article of manufacture, it permits its owner to exclude others. Again, the owner has certain rights. The rights are that he can exclude others from making, using, or selling the design. Design patents issued from applications filed on or after May 13, 2015. That's a particular date uh, with respect to uh, World Patent Organization. Shall be granted for the form of term of 15 years, earlier patents were granted for 14 years, the design patents. Now they have the time limit of 15 years. They're granted for a period of 15 years. So they are design patent. Design is related to, as the name implies, some design, some design. Then the third type of patent is related to plans. It is called plant patent. It is issued for a new or distinct, invented or discovered, a sexually reproduced plant, including cultivated spores, mutants, hybrids, and newly found seedlings, other than a tuber propagated plant or a plant found in an uncultivated state. It permits the owner, again, owner has the uh, exclusive rights that uh, he can prevent others from making, using, or selling the plant. This, this, is, this belongs to the plants category, and it, the plant must be new, plant, it must be have some distinctive features, it must have been invented by the uh, patent apl application holder, or it may have been dis disco discovered uh, a sexually reproduced plant, cultivated spores, mutants, etc. So some categories are there, and uh, this is related to plant patent. This is the third category of plant. And the fourth is simply reissue patent. Sometimes patents have to be, after issue, the patent has to be corrected. They, we, we have some uh, the the patent application uh, holder may detect some error in his application so this can be corrected and then the patent can be reissued uh, and that is what is known as reissue patent the scope of patent protection can change as a result of the reissue patent but the period of protection will be valid as from the original patent that means if the correction is made after two years he will lose two years of the patent protection. He, he will get the patent protection from the day of application, as Pratifu Khan has said. So um, sometimes it is also called reissue patent. Patent can be reissued if some errors are detected later on, and then uh, the patent may be corrected. So these four types of patents uh, are there uh, throughout the world, and uh, that is the general law. Now, uh, Pratifu Khan has explained almost everything. So, but then let me say why we need this intellectual property right. It has become more important in the recent years because of these things, because there is global competition. So if we can make some new discovery, new invention that can stand the global competition. So global competition is now too much in every field. So global competition is one region why Patents have been given much importance in almost every country. Then high innovation risk. So every day, every hour, somebody may innovate on any process or any design, any instrument, etc. So high innovation risk is there. So, so every day, some innovation will be there. Then short product cycle. Any product we make, is, uh, is its life cycle is very short. So say we make a particular design, that, that design may loss its significance in just one year or maybe in six months we need a new design so product cycle is very short nowadays the need for rapid changes in technology that we all understand that technology needs to be changed very rapidly then uh, the, all the governments are investing very heavily in research and development and since the investments are more so we expect that there will be more inventions more uh, more new products more new designs etc then uh, production and marketing are going on like anything and they have become important part of the present day economy production and marketing and also at the same time we need highly skilled human resources so highly skilled human resources are coming so one person may do something better than another person so this need for highly skilled human resources is also uh, this uh, one two three four five six seven these seven are main reasons 
why intellectual property rights have suddenly become so important suddenly means during the last few years and every government is paying its attention to IPR now uh, regardless of what product an enterprise or an individual makes or what service it provides it is likely that regularly using and creating a great deal of intellectual property is important that means we, we are using our head we are using our intellect regularly to find something new and that is what intellectual property that is that is the property of our mind there is an emergent need for enterprises and professionals to systematically consider the steps required as, as we are applying our mind as we are applying our intellect so there is also need for its protection and its management and also we need to enforce certain intellectual property rights that means the thing coming out of my mind which is quite different from any other uh, thing coming out of say minds of many other people should be protected and that is why need for protecting the intellectual property rights came so we we also have to uh, these are all related to the present economy the business and commerce etc etc and so uh, this is what makes the uh, ipr very important now it, uh, our protocol has explained very well that intellectual property is an intangible creation that means we cannot see it it is an intangible creation of the human mind usually expressed or translated into a tangible form that means intangible is converted to a tangible form which we can see that is assigned certain rights of property uh, basically intellectual property we cannot see it you know, what is there you know, going on inside my brain nobody can see it but out of that if some tangible form comes if it is converted to some machine if it is converted to some design then that becomes a property and then I need some kind of rights over that property which has come out of my brain that is what is intellectual property intellectual property refers to creations of the mind so as, as we have already told it that it is the creation of mind IPR or IP is the creation of mind so therefore it is related to inventions which are new then literary and artistic works and symbols names images designs used in commerce etc etc we practically all the new things having some significance coming out of our mind belong to intellectual property now uh, why we need intellectual property intellectual property is, uh, I mean, this is the uh, pretty has shown it towards the end but maybe he did not have time to explain it this is the world intellectual property organization definition that intellectual property according to the wipo these are the intellectual property which we need to protect first one is literacy literary artistic and scientific works literary works also need protection that means i can i i, I can produce some very good poetry uh, which is a, who, which comes out of my mind i i need to protect it because nobody is writing poetry in the way I am writing. Nobody is writing a novel as I am writing. So artistic work also needs protection. Scientific work also needs protection. That is the WIPO definition. The first one is literary, artistic, and scientific works. They need protection. Performances of the performing arts, phonograms and broadcast. That means the, the different dance forms, etc., and different performances over the stage. They also need to be protected. Inventions in all fields of human endeavor, scientific discoveries, industrial designs, trademarks, service marks, and commercial names and designations, protection against unfair competition. These seven are the criteria under which the world intellectual property organizations have been governing. Almost all the countries of the world are members of WIPO. They are governing the patent rights, the intellectual property rights seven categories now uh, Pratipukon has already explained it but let me say again copyright now copyright is again a particular particular right given to our our intellect that means it is given to our writings paintings 
musical works, dramatical works, audiovisual works, sound recordings, photographic works, broadcast, sculpture, drawings, and architectural works, etc. I have concluded this suite, etc. There may be other things which can be governed under copyright. But in all the, th all the things, I uh, intellectual property, you have to remember that these are not given to you. You, have, you will have to apply and you will have to register. There are different agencies for different categories of intellectual property rights. You have to register. And these rights are in such a way that you have to fight for them. The government will not say your right is uh, infringed by some persons or say you have a patent on a certain machine, but others are making that machine. Government will not protect your interest. You will have to go to court and you will have to protect your own intellectual property right. That is the, that is the point you have, we have to remember. That means whenever there is infringement, it is in the acts, but you will have to approach the courts for the, for the, for the protection given under the act. So who owns these rights? Say so the copyrights. If it is a literary activity, say it's a novel, it is a drama, it's a poem, etc. The author owns the uh, own. I think his microphone got muted, first microphone. Oh, yeah, sir. Yes. It, it got muted, I think. I I'm trying to contact Professor Bhattacharya. Participants of your patients would be appreciated. Sarda, 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 Funisame. Hello, Sarda.
So I apologize for the technical hazards that we are facing, but uh, let us see. Uh, sir has been contacted. Uh, let us see. I hope uh, the problems get over. डर अरुणिमा शर्मा हेज कन्टेक्टेड प्रफेसर भट्टाचार्य सो हि जॉन शर्टली Okay. There are some no technical problem. problems that he is facing. Yes, sir. So <laughs> maybe network issue. Yes, sir. Okay, no problem. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can Hello? hear you now. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. yes sir yes sir yes sir i got disconnected yes sir yes sir i got yes sir how far how far you have listened no sir it is only few minutes few minutes no okay few okay. minutes maybe the current owner, owner, ownership of rights ownership of rights अच्छा Uh, these exceptions are there if you are employed for a particular for was that means say if you are employed for writing a book then copyright will be owned by the employer not by you and say uh, you write say, an article in a newspaper or magazine then the employer um, the uh, person who uh, publishes that magazine or newspaper he will have the publishing right but the author will have the other rights then for photographs painting cinema etc the person who pays money that means if if i uh, hire a photographer to to take some photographs of a, of a particular occasion uh, but i have paid him then he will not have any copyright copyright will be with me that means whoever pays money will have the copyright then say for for authors say a lecture delivered in public Say now I am delivering a lecture. If it is delivered in a public platform, then I will have the copyright. But the meeting may be organized by you, so you you won't uh, have the copyright. Then similarly for government work, any government work, government may hire many persons for doing some work. The copyright will be with the government only. Public undertaking work, copyright will be with the public undertaking. Work of international organization, they say international organization hires you to do some project or. do something out of which you can bring out some patent but the that will be the international organization who will hold that right not you so that means it is important who pays for some work whoever pays is the uh, lawful owner of that work then uh, often uh, we have some times we have some uh, confusion and we have some quarrel in the newspapers also say a person has written a very good novel but then he has uh, expired and now somebody else is publishing that novel you cannot do it actually the copyright for literary dramatic musical and artistic works published during the lifetime of a author remains till the author uh, is alive and also plus 60 years that means after his death also the copyright will be with him or his family for another 60 years 
for all other works 60 years from date of publication posthumous anonymous works works of government and organizations cinema and sound recording photograph etc the copyright will be valid for 60 years but for for a for a literary work say if you write a novel the copyright will continue even after your date for 60 years uh, related rights means rights granted by law to communicators of works to the public performers broadcasting etc then uh, what is the right of the performer who is performed recording broadcasting and communicating to the public of a live performance the right will be performers Presum uh, presumption of transfer of performance right to cinematography film producer and for these uh, for, 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 for these rights the rights will belong to the performer and the right will uh, be there for a duration of 50 years five zero rights of broadcasting organization say a tv channel is broadcasting something the channel will have right to rebroadcast it uh, record it broadcast it again and again for him and the, the right will be for 25 years he can do and the channel can do it for 25 years without paying you anything now what is a patent of course i will not explain the protocol has professor protocol has explained it everything normally the period of patent is 20 years for 20 years you have the right over a certain thing and uh, protocol has also talked about this what can be patented that means it must have some novelty, it must be non-obviousness. That means uh, the patent will not appear that anybody can do it. I mean, that will not, not be patented. It must be something, something unique about that invention. Then also it must have industrial application. Unless the, it, ha it does not have industrial application, then normally the patent is not granted. It must have some application. Then grant of a patent, again the whole procedure has been explained. Patents are granted by national patent offices. Every country has a national patent office. In Europe, of course, they have the European patent office. That means for all the countries, they do it together. Patents are granted by national patent offices after publication and substantial examination of the application. In India, provisions exist for pre-grant and post-grant opposition by others. That means in India, there is a provision that uh, even before the patent is granted, or even after it is granted, there may be opposition, and this opposition will be taken into account. There may be objections by some parties, which will be taken into account. They are valid within the territorial limits of the country. Foreigners can also apply for patents. That means a, a person from other country can also apply for patents in our country. Uh, so there are some inventions which are not patentable. Uh, Professor Kukon has also touched on it. An invention which is frivolous or which claims anything obviously contrary to the well-established natural laws is not patentable. For example, we cannot claim that I have discovered a machine which can give more than 100% performance. 100% is the limit. So if I claim like that, that is not patentable. There is nothing like perpetual motion machine which will move on, move on, and move on. And also, we could say that Newton's laws of gravitation are bad, or, or, or I have invented a new law. Newton's laws of gravitation have been accepted universally. So there are certain things which are not patentable, which are like this. There may be other things. And also patentable are, are certain uh, machines. Say, for example, we cannot patent a gambling machine. That means which is of no public use uh, or, or which is contrary to public order. We cannot uh, make a device for housebreaking, which can say, say a chief can use or a decoy can use. So we, we can make a device like that, but that cannot be patented. Then biological warfare material cannot be patented. Terminator gene technology cannot be patented. Embryonic stem cell cannot be patented. So these are things which are not patentable. Then uh, mere discovery of a scientific principle cannot be patented. Formulation of an abstract theory cannot be patented. Discovery of any living thing or non-living substance occurring in nature. Say any living or non-living thing which is already there in nature, but I have discovered it, that cannot be patented. Discovery aids to the human. We all know that and examples are very clear that, for example, say the famous Archimedes 
principle, superconducting phenomenon such as uh, these are not patentable because they are, they are in the nature. Archimedes principle that means um, when I put a, something into water, it displaces water. That is that is already there. But Archimedes has simply saw it and uh, made, made some theory of it. So those kind of things which are very obvious cannot be patented. An apparatus or method for technological application, it may be patentable. Then uh, there are certain inventions which are considered as non pat not patentable. The mere discovery of a new form of known substance, which does not result in the enhancement of the known efficacy of that substance. That means I discover a substance which is similar to a known substance, but in no way it is better than the known substance. Then I cannot patent it. The mere discovery of any new property, new use for a known substance, of the mere use of a known process, machine or apparatus, unless such known process results in a new product. So these are certain things which are not accepted in the patent office and we cannot apply for patents. The patent laws, Pratip Fukone has explained very well. There are a number of laws which govern the patenting process in India. And uh, the jurisdiction has, has been well defined. That means I cannot apply anywhere. If I want to apply for, the, for a patent, uh, my uh, I will have to apply to the patent office in Kolkata because that is that the Kolkata office has the jurisdiction over us. There are uh, there are four patent offices in India. One is in Mumbai. The reason is given Maharashtra, Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh, Goa, Satisgarh, and Indian territory of Dhamon and Dew and Dadra and Nagar. I believe. Then there is a patent office in Chennai. The states covered are Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Indian territories of Pandesar in Lakshadi. Then another office in New Delhi, which covers the areas of Haryana, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Uttaranchal, Delhi, and Indian territory of Chandigarh. The patent office Kolkata is the original patent office. That was the first patent office in India that covers the rest of India. That means which, whichever state is not mentioned, that 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 is uh, that is covered by the Kolkata office, and we have to apply, to apply for Kolkata office. Then Then again, the procedure has been uh, given by Professor Fukun. Uh, the, the, all, all the procedures are given also in this website, www.ipiindia.nic.in. So guidelines are also given. And uh, the normal procedure is that you have to apply to the patent office. Then the, as Fukun has explained, that patent office will conduct sources to ascertain the prerequisites, that means uh, what, what requisites are necessary for filing a patent application, whether those prerequisites are made or not, the patent office will make a thorough SARS. And once that SARS is over uh, and it is satisfied with the SARS uh, results, then the application will be published. Then after publication, uh, there will be a, they will conduct an in-depth examination of the application. Then uh, if uh, during publication someone raises objection, those obje objections will be uh, considered and the applicant will be asked to meet those ob objections. And finally, uh, after all this, the patent will be granted. As Pukon has, Professor Pukon has pointed out, it may take up to two years. But then the uh, once the patent is granted, the patent will be from the date of application. So you will not lose any time. Trademarks, Pratip Fukun has said that there are some very well-known trademarks which can be registered. And again, there is an office for registration of these trademarks. Only when a trademark is registered, it will be valid and you can fight for it. There are different trademarks. Pratip Fukun has given you some. So these are some trademarks which you can see. Coca-Cola, Tata, everyone said. So we are driving different cars. So every car has a different type of trademark. Now, trademark is uh, usually given to identify a particular range of products. Say, for example, Coca-Cola or Pepsi or this particular range of products. But now later on, the people came to identify the trademark with quality also. Say, say for example, Coca-Cola has a particular quality. Pepsi has a particular quality. Then say the Tata vehicles have particular quality. Honda has particular quality. So although originally it was not meant to be used for quality consideration, but gradually these trademarks became associated with quality. And uh, say, for example, Philips. At our time, what time? No, the radio, uh, 
who value a Philips radio much more than any other company radio. So, so that came to be identified with some kind of quality. But then these trademarks are such that they can be used only by the particular company which has registered that trademark. And they can be registered almost indefinitely. That means they can be renewed and will continue indefinitely. Geographic indications, again, Professor Foucault has said about Rasagulla and all those things. And what it means that uh, it is basically an indication. It is not a right. So it, it is not considered as a right, but it's a kind of indication that from which region, which place, which day a particular product comes. It originates from a definite geographical territory. It is used to identify agricultural, natural, or manufactured goods. The manufactured goods should be produced or processed or prepared in that territory. It should have a special quality or reputation or other characteristics. So that means, uh, say, if a particular area, particular region, particular state has a product which it can say to be its own, then it can be registered. And that is what is known as geographical indication. It does not give any any special value, or it does not give any particular right. But then um, uh, we, we know that this product comes from this region originally. As Professor Foucault has said, we must have some historical basis uh, right from the very beginning of, uh, of of say civilization that this product belongs to us, and we are all along using it, manufacturing it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that historical indication is also important. And geographical indication, again, we can obtain it from a, every country has a, some registration authority for geographical indication. We, anybody, as Professor Fukun has pointed out, pointed out, anybody can apply to it, the state can apply, any NGO can apply, and then that uh, with, if the, everything is satisfied, then geographical indication, that GI mark is given. Uh, <coughs> OK. Uh, we have um, gone through all this, uh, so I did not go through it. So intellectual property right indicates all this. Professor Pokon has given very good description of every, everything. So I will not go into this. Uh, so normally, by intellectual property right, normally we, we consider it only as patents. Patents are, of course, intellectual property right, but patents is just a class of IPR. It is, it is not all. There, there are different things like copyright, geographical indication, etc., etc. And uh, normally, again, many people think that if I get uh, IPR, if I get patent right or intellectual property right over a certain thing, then it has commercial value. That means I, ca I can uh, do some business with it. Uh, I can make commercial use of it. Sometimes it is true, but not all the time. It has been found throughout the world that of the uh, patents registered throughout the world, only about 2% of the patents generate some financial benefit. Others are there, but uh, to generate financial benefit, it must be very, very special. No? So uh, it will be wrong to assume that if we go for intellectual property right, or if I, if I have a patent, then it will bring me some money, bring me some financial benefit. It, it, is, it is not like that. Or you have to remember that only 2% of the patents registered have been financially useful and have brought, brought some fun to the inventors. Okay, we have this uh, we have already come across World Intellectual Property Organization. This was the organization which governs all the rules and regulations with respect to IPR, and uh, it, it is a specialized agency of United Nations. Its so main office is located in Geneva, Switzerland, and the organization has external offices at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Tokyo in Japan, Singapore, and New York. So these are the regional offices. And it has 185 member states, 68 intergovernmental organizations are members of it, and 232 international non-government organizations and 63 national NGOs are accredited ob observers at WIPO meetings. That means when WIPO meetings are held in Geneva, uh, it may be attended by 185 member states, 68 intergovernmental organizations, 232 international NGOs and 63 national NGOs. It's a huge organization which oversees the rules and regulations and administration of the intellectual property right throughout the world. Okay, 
I think I will not go beyond this because many of the things uh, Professor Foucault has explained and uh, uh, therefore I, I will formally conclude here but if you have any questions I will answer them. I, I will try to answer those questions. I think Professor Foucault is here. He may also answer some of the questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Professor Bhattacharya, thank you so much. So it was uh, very uh, enriching listening to you. And uh, we cannot thank you enough for this, for this presentation. So uh, again, this uh, online platform is open for interaction. Participants, uh, put forward their queries, their questions, uh, are, are welcome to do so. Sir, so, so good evening. Good evening. Sir, my question is for both Pradeep Fukun sir and you. Same question is uh, there. Am I audible to you, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Am I audible to you, sir? Yes, yes, I can hear you. Yes, go ahead. Yes, sir. Sir, my question is that uh, already you have told that uh, patents, uh, validity of the patents is for only 20 years. Yeah. So after that, uh, so uh, that patent is not valid means uh, there is no validity, uh, means there is no renewability process. We can renew it or we can continue for more years. No, life is 20 years. It means that after 20 years, it, it does not remain your property. Anybody can use it. It's a public. Okay. Yeah, okay, it, okay. A, it, it becomes a public property after 20 okay. years. Okay. Okay. So validity will be remain for a long time also, right? Not for only for 20 years. If, if, it, is, if it is useful, if it remains useful, then other parties will, we can use it. Okay, it is okay. a manufacturing process. Say, for example, you are you are you are you are inventing certain machine. Okay. After twenty years, you cannot claim that it belongs to you. You cannot claim say uh, financial consideration. After twenty years, anybody can go to, to the public domain, uh, take the formula, and can uh, do the manufacturing or whatever they want to do. Okay, okay, okay sir. Just that query was there in my mind. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, madam, for your question. Uh, any more questions? Actually, sir, I have a question. Yes, please. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, sir, uh, actually, while, while I was listening uh, to your presentation, uh, this occurred to my mind. So I think that I should put it up um, to clear my, uh, you know, my doubts. Uh, so uh, as you said that the copyright uh, remains in force, in case of an author, so that the copyright remains in force uh, even after his death for 60 more years. So uh, suppose, sir, that there is a translator who wants to translate a particular work uh, written by uh, an author who is no more, and that uh, 60 years of posthumous period of that validity of the copyright is also uh, is over. Uh, so then, sir, is it legal for that translator to translate that work without any permission? Or does the translator still need to obtain uh, permission from some body or some, from some agency? Mm, it is, it's a difficult question, but then uh, after 60 years, the copyright will be no longer there. So, yes. but then uh, the, the, um, if, if one wants to translate his works, say, uh, for example, uh, I want to translate some of the works of Rabindranath Tagore now. But then who was the original publisher? No? I will have to take permission from them. That, like that. There, there are always certain considerations. The uh, Ravi Thakur's family may not hold the copyright now, but then publisher is continuing with the publication. And uh, some maybe I think Professor Pradeep Fukun will know, maybe uh, I will have to take permission from the publisher. Say, say there is a biography of biography of Einstein, published something like say uh, thirty years, forty years back. I want to translate it into Assamese. I'll yes, take sir. permission from the publisher. Yeah. Yeah. In such cases, copyright law will not be valid. 
So I will give you one simple example. Yes. Do you know this uh, Mark? Uh, you know Greek, uh, the king, uh, uh, Roman king, that Mark Aurelius. Yes. Meditation. Yes. Have you have you ever read Meditation? That book. Yes, I have, uh, I've read, you know, his, you must uh, have heard about his, yes, I yes, have yes, my, yes, uh, yes, I own my quotes. Yes. Yeah. I, I've read lots of his quotes, which are very inspiring. Yeah. So actually yeah, that yes. meditation, you just search in uh, meditation, English person, because it was in originally in Roman. You'll find several actually uh, translators. So then they translate it then publish it and uh, uh, this. And once you translate it, because all the translation word, whatever, because that is your again, you are speaking your mind while translating, right? Yes. You read one book, then you are translating to your own language. So after six days or whatever it may be. So it will be slightly different from the original work. The there will be some kind of originality in there. In such cases, you don't need to have anything. But sorry, saying that. Uh, uh, if the publisher is still pr publishing, there may be a uh, necessity of taking from some. That I'm not sure of it, but still I think uh, in such cases also copyright matters will not be played. Oh. So before translating, some amount of research should also go into that. that uh, yeah, what yeah, is yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Sir. 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 Yeah. Yes, yes. If a student says for a painter, sorry, sir, uh, let us take for a painter, wants to uh, make a copyright for his painting, then how can they, after applying, uh, what is the actually, it is, is it good or bad? Who will decide? The authority probably decide it, it is good or bad. But uh, what is the, is there any standard for uh, to be a, to get a copyright? for paintings or performing arts or other things? No. no actually, actually, in this case, the quality will not be decided by the authority. You can apply for a copyright and then uh, if there is no claim, no other claims, no other opposition, then copyright will be granted. But then authority will not decide its quality, whether it is good or bad. That is, that is for, for different agencies to decide. Uh, yeah, okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, another thing, once you paint it, yeah. okay, so you don't need to go for registration of copyright. So once you paint it and made it public, it's you are, you, that is your copyright. If, if it, it is not yeah, on your own, on your own, yes, on your own. Once you publish it, you, you got your copyright on that particular one. That doesn't matter how good or how bad it is. But it's a painting, yeah. it's a new, it's a original, it's a creation of your own work. Then, yeah. once you made it public, it is uh, copyrighted. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay. Sarada, Sarada, oh, yes, there, is a, there is a question in the chat box. Yes, I will read it out. Yes, uh, there is a question from Mudit Jain. And he asks that, uh, respected sir, does a government impose tax on the money earned through, earned through patenting a valuable invention? I, I repeat the question. Uh, does a government impose tax on the money earned through patenting a valuable invention? Is it taxable, the money? <laughs> <laughs> it, it will be taxable if, if, if your income is much more than uh, your, your income. Um, it, it will be governed by income tax law as well as this, uh, this uh, uh, GST and all those laws will be applicable. Yeah, if you earn a lot, you will be, you will be taxable. Uh, I hope, uh, Mudit, your question is answered. Any other questions uh, from the participants? Uh, any responses? Fufulla Kumar Bora has raised his hand. Fufulla. Yes, uh, Bora, sir, please. Yeah, Mudit has thanked our uh, speakers. Maybe Pardon? he raised his hand by mistake. 
Uh, sir, Mudit Jain, who posed the question in the uh, chat box, he has thanked um, both of you. Okay. okay. Uh, Thank you. For answering this question. Yes, sir. I think uh, he has raised his hand by mistake, Bora, sir. Mm. So if there are no more questions, uh, can we move on to the next part? Any questions, participants? Please? Yeah, yeah. Sarda, you go to the next part, please. Okay, okay sir. So uh, I express my heartfelt gratitude to all the participants uh, who have uh, raised uh, questions and uh, who have made this interaction meaningful. Thank you so much. Uh, although the presentations uh, have been made, we would love to listen uh, to another eminent and uh, dynamic academician who is here with us and uh, who has a very intimate relation with the college. And we are fortunate to have him as the president of the college governing body. Professor Jogen Chandra Kalita is the head of the Department of Biology, Guwahati University, and the General Secretary of ZSA. Today is the foundation day of the college, and Sir has been with us uh, in this webinar since the beginning. So, Sir, may I now request you to share a few words with us in the context of this national webinar on intellectual property rights. Please, sir. Thank you, Professor Sarada. I am really very much delighted to be with you throughout this particular right from the beginning to the end of this uh, webinar really very enjoyable i congratulate all of you the principal dr lila kanta bhathakur our most beloved professor professor krishna gopal bhattacharya our friend colleague and very talented professor of guwahati university professor pradeep pukon dr hemalata sharma ma'am vice principal Dr. Arunima Sarma, head of the Department of Chemistry. Dr. Ranjit Kakoti, who is the IQSC coordinator. Ranjit Kalita, and sorry, Dr. Sardas is Choudhury. Bulbul Das, technical coordinator. IPR cell, all involved. And esteemed participant friends. The professors of chemistry department, as we all know, the department of chemistry, Morigaon College, is very prominent in the academic map of the world because they know how to connect good professors, eminent personality like Professor KGB sir, Professor Pradeep Pugan, and many more. And they are working very good, doing very good research and working for the region. I was listening to Professor Pradeep Pukon very carefully. It was excellent deliberation. Everything got cleared. I had few questions, but when I asked him, he cleared one after another. And from the audience side also, everything was so good, very dynamic, very active. And uh, no need to say anything about Professor Bhattasarji sir. Whenever, wherever our Professor Vishnagupal Bhattasarji Sar is there, you can see that everything is fine. And that Sar could give us time. It's, we, are, we feel very fortunate. And your entire team is so good. Your hosting the webinar is also excellent. And the participant friends are so with so much of patience. It's a long webinar, very important topic. As you know, it depends on the economy. Actually, the IPR economy depends on mostly on IPR, science and technology, and most of the things as Professor, both the professor has, have explained. So therefore, we need to be rich to be developed. We need to have good IPR situation, laws, guidance. And when where we have Professor Pradeep Pugan, institution like ESTE, guide like Professor KGB sir, we can progress more than any others. I am sure that with this full confidence, whatever you are doing today, many of our young scientists, many of our young students, they are getting 
most of the benefit out of it. As I can see, I can say that most of the time, last few uh, months, the IQSC has become so active. The, all the department. Yesterday I was with geography department. Then before few days I was with uh, education department, and many more to come. And it's a very dynamic educational institution <clears throat> under the leadership of Dr. Lilakanta Bhattacharya. And I am sure that all of you are working together. That's very important. I visited chemistry department with Dr. Kakoti, head of the department, Dr. Professor Dilip Kakoti. And on that day also, a lecture was delivered to your student. And I found that even your students are so brilliant. The questions and the deliberations on that day, I was observing as a as DB president, and I found that you are doing so good. And the rest of the departments also so good. And today is the foundation day. All are celebrating with a unique example of organizing very unique webinar. IPR, it's a very important issue. We need to talk more. We need to okay, empower our scientists as well as we can make awareness in the society. And more responsibility to the IPR unit from today. Because as Professor Pradeep Pukon say, that they can do some of the things, but very briefly he mentioned, and I'm sure that IQSC, which has been regarded as the engine of the society, will be able to accommodate many more ideas to develop the college. And I do not want to uh, make it a long speech because all of you are, okay, emotionally attached to Professor KGB sir and Professor Pradeep Pukon, academically so sound, so therefore, I wish that in near future, you will be able to do so much with the galaxy of luminaries like all of you. Thank you so much. Namaskar. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for your encouraging words. We are really motivated to do better. Thank you, sir. So uh, with this, uh, we have almost uh, reached the end of uh, today's webinar. May I now request Dr. Ranjit Kumar Kolita, coordinator of the IQSC Morigaon College, to deliver the vote of thanks. OK, Sarada. Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good evening to everybody. On behalf of IQSC Morigaon College, at first, I would like to thank Dr. Lilakanto Botaku, principal of Morigao College, for his for allowing us to organize this webinar. This is the third webinar organized by IQSC in 2021, and the eighth webinar as a whole during this uh, during recent pandemic situation. And this has become possible due to his uh, dynamic leadership. I also like to thanks our GB president, Dr. Jukan Sonda Korita, for inspiring us to organize more and more webinars. My sincere thanks goes to resource person and scholar, Professor Podip Pukon, FRSC, Department of Chemistry of Guwahati University, for his informative lecture on IPI. Your presence makes the program very fruitful, sir. My sincere thanks also goes to Professor Krishna Gopal Bhattacharya of Guwahati University for his nice and informative presentation on the topic. We are able to gather knowledge from his mind-blowing presentation. I also thanks Dr. Ounima Sarma, the architecture of this webinar. Uh, due to her hard work, we are able to acquire knowledge in this topic. My sincere thanks also goes to Dr. Sarodasi Sudhuri, Assistant Professor, Department of English, for her beautiful moderation and help to make the webinar a successful one. Uh, I also thanks Technical Assistant and Assistant Professor of Computer Science Department, 
Mr. Bulbul Das for his outstanding contribution towards the webinar. Lastly, I thanks to all participants of the webinar whose presence makes the webinar very fruitful one. Thank you. Thank you to all. Thank you. Sada. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kalita, sir. Um, before we leave this meeting, I would like to request all the participants to kindly fill up and submit the feedback form. It has already been shared in the chat box. So uh, e-certificates will be issued upon submission of feedback form. So I again request the participants to do the needful. And um, before okay. we, uh, before okay. we Thank wind you. up. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Yeah. Before we wind up, I would once again like to thank uh, everyone who is present here, our respected uh, honorable uh, president of the governing body, uh, Professor Judyan Kalita, sir, our distinguished speakers uh, for today's uh, webinar, Professor Fukun and Professor Bhattacharya. Thank you so much for these, you know, invaluable presentations. We would actually, you know, we would store these as treasures. Uh, and, uh, I, uh, yeah, someone's microphone is uh, is unmuted. Oh, so, uh, again, on <laughs> so at the end of it, I would like to wind it up. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. Before more microphones get unmuted, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. ভাবি <laughs> 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 ঠিক <laughs> 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 যত লাগে ভালকে লাগে যে যত লাগে খুব ভালকে লাগে আমার ডক্টর রঞ্জিত কলিতা দিনে দিনে মানুষ কিন্তু বহুত ডাইনামিক হয়ে গে আছে একুশ সনত টু থাউজেন্ড টুয়েন্টি ওয়ান হয়ে গেল আর ইমান কন হয়ে আছে আনন্দ পাইছো আর কেনবাকে আমি এনে যদি থাকি পো আর ভাল দিন তো আইবই মানে ভাবো জুলাই ভিতরতে সাকসেস <laughs> হলে <laughs> <laughs> পিছর কথা খি পাতি থাকি মন যায় 
সকলকে মানে শুভেচ্ছা দিছো আহি থাকা কেখন ধুনিয়া কই হও ভাল লাগিলে আর দুইজন স্পিকারে মানে এক্সেলেন্ট আর তেওঁলোকে মই মানে ভাবো যে আমার আই পি আর সেল যে আছে এই আই পি আর আমার স্টুডেন্ট লোক এই মেসেজ বিল লো যাব লাগে বহু কথায় মানে ইনভেন্ট করে বা বহুত সিহতর মানে হেরি আছে ইনোভেটিভ আইডিয়া কিছু আছে যা কথা আসলে আই পি আর সেল বিলাক সিহতক যদি লাইন কিছু দেখাই দিব আমি অল্প কাম করবো পড়ো গতি আমার আই পি আর সেলের কনভেনার আমার ডক্টর অরুণিমা শর্মা তো এনেও এইখিন মানে যথেষ্ট কাম করে আর মানে আজিয়ে মানে অনুরোধ করছি মানে যাতে আমার গোটাই ডিপার্টমেন্ট বিল শিক্ষকের কথা পাতক পাতি পেলায় প্রতিজন শিক্ষকের যদি ডিপার্টমেন্ট বিল স্টুডেন্টর শেয়ার করে কথা বিল আজি তো বহু শিক্ষক আমার ইয়াতে জয়েন করেছে বহু কথা জানিছে আজি গতি ইয়ার জড়িয়ে আমি ছাত্র ছাত্রী সকল জানাব আর আমার ওসরে পাজরে যদি এনেকা নতুন কিনা ইনোভেটিভ আইডিয়া আছে আমি আমার ফুকন সারে আমি যদি অকান এপ্লিকেশন করা সহায় করে দিব আমি কিছু মানে কমিউনিটি সার্ভিস এটা আমার ভাল কমিউনিটি সার্ভিস এটা হয়ে যায় আজিকালি হিমাখা বাইদ আমি টিভিতে দেখা পাও আমি টিভিতে দেখা পাও আমার শুভেচ্ছা থাকিলে আর মানে এটা এই কথাটা ওলার কারণে মানে কোথাও আমার যখন এনেকা এক্টিভিটি আছে যে টিভি টক শো দিব গেছে এয়া কিন্তু আমার কলেজর এই ডিভিবিত কিন্তু কামত আইব এই আমার ডক্টর রঞ্জিত কলিতায় এই মন করব লাগে যে এনেকা প্রোগ্রামত যায় অরুণিমাও জানে রঞ্জিত কলিতা থাকার কারণে কথা মিনিটর ড্রোন লগাই দি পেলাই এটা ভিডিও করিব লাগে আর যে আনব ব্রহ্মপুত্র প্রথমতে আনব তারপর মরিগাঁও আহিব তারপর কলেজ হলে আহিব এই হল ফার্স্ট জানিব আগতে করা মানুষ তারপর আহি আহি মরিগাঁওর কলেজ খর ভিতর বিভিন্ন কথাব কব আজি কি বছর সিক্সটি সেভেন হল না পরিক্রমা এটা এই ক্ষেত্রতক আন আর কোনেও পাঁচ ছয় মিনিটের ভিতর করে দিব নয় গতি আমার সীমারেখা যদি তেনেকে করে দিয়ে 
रंजित कलिता we have the webinar no problem but no our college e bhi ei 5 minute college kono bikhe geography ta jone kotha bole situr or pora beyond to college kon kotha principal e man kobolu samoy nai jodi intro video tu dekhai dibo doctor kolitai pare etu iqsc kam aro eta dekhai dibo iqsc present college aro etia hobo ki amar etia college kon etia ki dina moi jeta tv ta amar ei program tu je डांसर प्रोग्राम तो जे ये तो आरो मिलियन मिलियन कुटि कुटि मानुए घरते साय थके ए मोरीगांव केनिकुआ गय इंटरनेशनली फोकस होय असे मोरीगांव रे जे स्वाली जनी जे मान ओ गुटि के एटा मोरीगांव माने वर्ल्ड और कल्चरल मेप माने अमर टीवी चैनल केता आपन लोग सकलवे जाने टीवी बेसिक तो दिस आई इंडिया टीवी केता साय आरो अमर ए टीवी केता गुटे पृथ्वी रे एकदम ताल फाल लगाय असे अमर यंग टैलेंट सर्च और मोरीगांव में किया था मैंने मोरीगांव बोली कॉल लगा लगा मैंने जाने आया हूँ एक आने मौर्य बाबी से जो दिया हमारे टेनिस का डोनर दार प्रतिभा से सिनेमा बनवार प्रतिभा से डॉक्यूमेंट्री बनवार प्रतिभा से टॉक्सिक भागलवार प्रतिभा से ओबीजा के साथ खूब भाल सोबिया के � Whenever anything, any function, any event is organized, immediately, I think I am going to get the hosting for it. Sardar has to deal with it. Sardar, you need to get some kind of. I mean, our, just a minute, look. I mean, what are they doing? It's believing. And I think I am going to get some kind of. But because of that, I think Dr. Gupen has done some kind of. I think I am going to get some kind of. I think I am going to. আর আপনার কো কলেজ তো আনি আনি খুব হই দিব কি খুব হই দিব অ বিভিন্ন কমিউনিটির মধ্যে দি বিভিন্ন বিবর্তনের মধ্যে দি দা রিভলিউশন যেটু মানে ইভলিউশন রাইট ওকে ইন দা বিগিনিং টুডে ইজ 57 ইয়ার্স কমপ্লিশন নয় জানো এই যে গুটি বিবর্তন তো তেও আনিব এনে কে আনিব উইথ ডকুমেন্টেশন আর কিমান সময়ত আনিব উইথ 5 6 মিনিট একদম প্রমিনেন্ট এলুম নাই Dominant scan, dominant teasers, what a what they call it. Or that is the difference. College or more than a set. After all, we have to take it. Or that is the difference. The talks of daily you go there. Our composite to our palate take it. Doctor, doctor, on this point, on this point, come back. 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 मैं कलिता এও কৰা আপুনি আমি কলেজে বেনিফিট লব লাগে দ্যাট ইজ সুসি বাইদে কৰা কাম মই ভাল ৰে জানো আমি তেও ইমান সেনসিটিভ তেও এটা কোনোবাই কৰিব যে হোয়াইট সেনসিটিভ মানে সব টেকেট অফ কামৰে এই যে এটা এটা ইস্যু আছে পাবলিকলি কথা কব গৈছে ওয়েন देयर ইজ সাম প্ৰবলেম প্রিন্সিপালৰ লগত ডিসকাস কৰি সলভ কৰিছে জেনেকে এই যে ইমান কলেজখনৰ বেয়া দিনত আৰু মই জানো মহন্ত ডাঙৰিয়া আমার রাইজৰ পিছৰ পা কেদিন মানে হৈছে তথাপি তে কেদিন তে আমি আকো কথা পাতিব পৰা হৈছো একে লগে মনৰ আমাৰ পোলে মনটো অকমান ফগি ফলকাই যায় যে মই বহুত ভাল কথা হ'ব আৰু ডক্টৰ মই বৰঠাকুৰ গেটা অনুৰোধ কৰিছো এজ প্ৰিন্সিপাল তেখেতে বৰ ধুনিয়া কবিতা লিখে তেখেতে লিখা কবিতা বিদেশৰ মই শুনি এই অসমৰ লিখিব পাৰিবা না জানো কিন্তু বিদেশৰ ওলাই গ'ল তেখেতে माने बिखे को जापान और चीन और बाल लंदन और तेरे को भी क्या लिखे जो तेरे का यहाँ तो लिखे मैं इतने तेरे को तेरे के पास हूँ ओ मौसम को कौन है 
পরীক্ষা নিদিয়াকে নম্বর পোৱাতকে পৰীক্ষা দি নম্বৰ পোৱাটো বেছি ভাল সেই কথাটো গুৰুত্ব দিলে কথা কথা ইয়াৰ হয় স্যার কমপ্লিট এক্সামিনেচন ইট ইজ ভেরি ডিফিকাল্ট টু গিভ জাস্টিস টু দ্য স্টুডেন্ট হয় স্যার এটো এটো মেইন কথা ইমান একাকে আদি কৰি মই সকলোকে অনুৰোধ কৰিছো মানে পাতি কাগজ লৈ পজিটিভ আৰ্টিকল লিখক যে আমি আহি থকা দিনত যদি কোভিড কিবা কাৰণত দিঘলিয়াও হয় মৰিগাঁও কলেজ খন ফেমাস হৈ যাব টাইমস অফ ইন্ডিয়াত 